Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our telephone town hall with special guest U.S. Senator from Iowa, Joni Ernst. I'm Mackie Burr, Director and Digital of Digital and Grassroots Development for White Coat Waste Project, and I will be moderating the town hall tonight. Tonight, we'll be speaking with Senator Ernst about the urgent initiative she's working on with us right now. There's one you've probably been hearing about in the news a lot lately, and that's our work to shut down tax funding for dangerous animal experiments in Wuhan, China, at the lab where a growing chorus of experts believes COVID-19 may have originated. We'll also get into the Senator's tremendous record of working to expose and end taxpayer funding for wasteful animal experimentation back here at home. And we also want to make sure to take your questions tonight, so please press zero at any time to ask a question. For those of you who are just joining us, I want to welcome you to our telephone town hall tonight with special guest U.S. Senator from Iowa, Joni Ernst. I'm Mackie Burr, Director of Digital and Grassroots Development for the White Coat Waste Project, and I will be moderating the town hall tonight. Uh, tonight, we'll be speaking with Senator Ernst about the urgent initiative she's working on with us right now. There's one you've probably been hearing about in the news a lot lately, and that's our work to shut down tax funding for dangerous animal experiments in Wuhan, China, at the lab where a growing chorus of experts believes COVID-19 may have originated. We'll also get into the Senator's tremendous record of working to expose and end taxpayer funding for wasteful animal experimentation back here at home. If you want to ask any questions tonight, please press zero at any time and you will be directed to a screener who will take your questions. Okay, and now I'd like to introduce you to Justin Goodman, Vice President of Advocacy and Public Policy at the White Coat Waste Project. Justin? Thank you, Mackie, and thank you to everyone who's called into our town hall to hear about our work with Senator Ernst to end taxpayer funding for wasteful, expensive, and cruel animal experiments both at home and abroad. I see a lot of people are calling in, uh, so so excited that so many people are joining us here. Uh, and then for anyone coming late, we're getting started here right now, so you haven't missed very much. Uh, now, I've had the pleasure of working with Senator Ernst for many years, and I personally had the honor of recognizing her in 2019 with White Coat Waste Project's Waste Warrior Award for her brilliant leadership. And let me tell you, as the first female combat veteran to serve in the U.S. Senate, my friend Senator Ernst is exactly the person who you want to be fighting alongside. Among many, many other things, Senator Ernst has been a driving force behind historic efforts to defund dangerous coronavirus experiments on animals in Wuhan, China and to increase transparency and accountability about all taxpayer-funded animal testing, which we'll update you a little bit later on this call. So you can see why we're so excited tonight to do this telephone town hall with her. Thank you for being here, Senator Ernst. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you, Justin, and thank you, White Coat Waste Project, for all of your hard work to push the government to stop wasting taxpayer money on unproductive and even dangerous research. Having spent my career working to eliminate wasteful government spending and protect taxpayers' hard-earned dollars, uh, this is an issue that's near and dear to my heart and that so many Iowans and other Americans are very concerned about. So I'm happy to be here tonight to talk about my work. What we discovered was happening with our tax dollars in Wuhan, China, is so disturbing. And I'm here to tell you all what we're doing to stop any of your money from going to red China. Thank you, Senator Ernst. Now, just for some background for folks who might not be familiar with uh, the ins and outs of what we're talking about yet, uh, last year, White Coat Waste Project was the first to expose how National Institutes of Health Funding, that's the NIH uh, government agency, was secretly, secretively funding, uh, funneling money to the notorious Wuhan Institute of Virology for dangerous coronavirus experiments on animals. Now, within days of our expose, then President Trump asked the grant through which the tax dollars were being sent to Wuhan. This is great. And we've been working with Senator Ernst ever since to permanently block funding for this lab and others like it. Now, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, uh, if you've been following the news, is the controversial bioagent lab in China where top experts 
and polls show now a majority of our fellow taxpayers, according to a new Harvard poll, uh, believe the COVID-19 pan- pandemic may have leaked from. Now, specifically, we found that the Wuhan Animal Lab was capturing coronavirus-infected wild bats in an incredibly cruel manner and transporting them about a 1,000 miles to a lab in the densely populated city of Wuhan. They were then isolating these wild viruses from the bats and intentionally engineering these viruses to make them deadlier and more contagious to humans. Then they were taking these manipulated viruses and injecting them into so-called humanized mice in cruel experiments to see if they could infect them with these lab-grown viruses. Now, this is the so-called gain-of-function experimentation that many of you may have heard about in the news. And this is really the crux of the lab leak hypothesis, that the Wuhan Animal Lab engineered a novel coronavirus that then accidentally leaked and caused the pandemic. And in fact, scientists have been warning for decades, literally decades, that this kind of -of gain-of-function research could cause a pandemic. And coronaviruses have even leaked out of labs before in both China and the United States. Now, what's worse is that these treacherous animal experiments in Wuhan were happening with U.S. tax dollars and with the knowledge of the National Institutes of Health, the agency that is supposed to protect public health, not put it at risk. So, given all of this, it was no surprise that Senator Joni Ernst, a waste warrior who has literally risked her life to protect national security, immediately stepped up to say that what we found was unacceptable and dangerous and it had to stop. Well, yes, and and thanks, Justin. And to get to the bottom of how this terrible pandemic started, we must follow the science and the money. So I was I was really stunned um, when I learned from Justin and his team, who is phenomenal at the White Coast Waste uh, Project, that the NIH was allowing our tax dollars to be shipped to the Communist Party-run Wuhan Institute of Virology for these dangerous coronavirus experiments. Um, So, again, just remember that this is the same state-run lab that the U.S. State Department officials warned in 2018 might cause a coronavirus pandemic because of its sloppy safety practices. So it was crazy that we were allowing that money to go to Wuhan. We also know now that the lab has deleted key data that could shine light on COVID's origins and that the Communist Party of China has refused to allow an investigation into the lab's potential role in causing the pandemic. Well, of course, what did we think communist China would do? Yet the NIH and other federal agencies continued to allow our tax dollars to be sent to this facility, which again, and I can't stress this enough, is run by a foreign adversary where there's no real accountability or transparency to our American public. And all in all, Justin, this sounds like a recipe for disaster. So, That's you know, exactly right, Senator Ernst, and I know you've yeah. been working for over a year now to end this. Yeah, absolutely, Justin. In April of 2020, right after White Coast, uh, White Coast investigation, I helped lead a successful effort. It was backed by more than 50 senators and representatives to ensure that no COVID-19 stimulus funds were sent to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And working with White Coat, we've been able to end active funding for the Wuhan lab But um, believe it or not, it is still eligible for more taxpayer funding. Uh, So we also needed to take action to ensure no tax dollars ever again are sent to Wuhan. And I'm proud to share that this May, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed my amendment to permanently prohibit the Wuhan Institute of Virology from receiving any federal funding. We're hoping to get that bill to the president's desk later this year. And you'd better believe I am going to make sure that our tax dollars aren't 
sent to a state-run virus lab in China, which has little to no accountability to the American people or government? Well, I know I speak for everyone on the call, Senator Ernst, when I say how incredibly grateful we are for your leadership. Uh, I know also that transparency has long been a priority for you. And really, a lack of it is one reason why taxpayer funding for the Wuhan Animal Lab flew under the radar for so long. Uh, this spring, for instance, White Coat exposed how a U.S. nonprofit that was funneling NIH funds to the Wuhan lab for animal experiments had repeatedly violated federal law by failing to disclose that it was actually sending funds there and how much it was sending. Yeah, and that's right, Justin. And I so appreciate White Coat's important investigative work that, that uncovered all of this. And as if violating the law wasn't bad enough, um, this shady nonprofit we now know to be EcoHealth Alliance, they also refuse to provide answers to important questions from NIH related to the safety conditions of the Wuhan lab or the details about the coronaviruses that were being studied there. So instead of withholding U.S. tax dollars from EcoHealth for failing to answer these questions, NIH gave them yet another grant. And still a year later, EcoHealth has not answered these questions. So I've introduced the Stop the Outlay of Payments Act or STOP Act to cut off all funding to any organization, any, that refuse to provide information about a project or fails to obey federal laws. Now, I really can't stress enough how important this legislation is. Uh, and it really has implications far beyond just the animal lab in Wuhan. Uh, and anyone concerned with animal experiments should be concerned uh, with what's going on. Because we regularly find that taxpayer-funded animal labs right here in the U.S. are violating federal law with impunity. And here's just some other examples of animal labs that we've exposed broke federal law by not disclosing their wasteful spending. So these are labs that receive taxpayer funding, for animal experiments in the U.S. and then failed to disclose how much they were spending in violation of federal law. Just a short list of examples. Uh, Stanford University experimenters who implanted fingers from human fetuses into mice. Yes, that's real and as disgusting as it sounds. Uh, Harvard experimenters who breed aggressive mice, get them drunk, and force them to fight one another in a taxpayer-funded, essentially a fight club. Uh, we're talking about Princeton experimenters who confine monkeys into tiny cages, lock them in restraint devices, and record their screaming, and then use that to create computer simulations of what it might sound like for a monkey to say, will you marry me? That's real. There's MP3s of that online if you want to listen to it. It's very spooky. Uh, there's University of Maryland experimenters getting mice high on psychedelic mushrooms. Uh, there's plenty of people getting high on psychedelic mushrooms. I don't think we need to do that to mice. Uh, and there's another example of experimenters at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, who were drilling holes into monkey skulls to, dis to study how their brains respond to music. These, just these five projects alone represent millions and millions of wasted taxpayer dollars and extensive violations of federal law. These people do not want you to know what they're doing. So it's no surprise that these NIH-funded experimenters want to keep their stupid spending a secret. But, of course, taxpayers have a right to know how their money is being spent. And Senator Ernst's STOP Act would help hold these rogue labs accountable by cutting their funding if and when they violate federal law. Oh, my gosh, Justin. Um, after so many years <laughs> of working, oh, I can't believe it. I mean, so many years of working to expose wasteful spending, and you'd think that I've heard of everything. Um, but those projects are just downright shocking and really great examples of why I'm fighting hard to ensure taxpayers can actually see where their hard-earned dollars are going. Well, thank you so, so much, Senator Ernst and Justin, for sharing details about these uber-important efforts and the exciting progress being made uh, 
to end wasteful taxpayer-funded animal experiments at home and abroad. Um, I just want to remind everybody, if you want to ask a question, please press zero. Um, some people are calling our phone number on the website, but please just press zero to ask a question. Um, now, we have some special guests on the line who are anxious to hear more about Senator Ernst's work on these issues. Our first guest is Dr. Tiffany Millis from Des Moines, Iowa. Dr. Millis is a White Coat Waste Project medical advisor and board certified pathologist meaning she's an expert in diagnosing diseases. Dr. Millis, are you there? I am. Thank you. Um, first Ooh. off, as a, fellow, as a fellow Iowan, I want to express my heartfelt thanks to you, Senator Ernst, for your work with the White Coat team to cut wasteful animal tests, and also for the important work you're doing to determine COVID's origins. And as an Iowa physician, I've seen the devastating effects of COVID-19 firsthand and if a lab leak caused the pandemic, we must know so that we can take steps to prevent another one. My question is, what's being done in Washington to crack down on this dangerous gain-of-function research that experts have warned for decades could cause a pandemic? Oh, well, thank you uh, for your question, Dr. Millis, and, of course, your kind words. And, and uh, you know, bottom line, your work to keep the people of Iowa healthy. And I'm also very troubled that the NIH would fund these dangerous gain-of-function experiments, and especially at a Chinese Communist Party-run animal lab. And to me, this demonstrates a staggering lack of judgment and accountability at the NIH. And to prevent this from ever happening again, I co-sponsored and helped pass legislation in the Senate to cut funding for any gain-of-function research in China. Agreed. We, we definitely need answers from the NIH, uh, first and foremost. And I just want to quickly add that in 2014, the Obama-Biden administration placed a moratorium on gain-of-function research following a few high-profile lab leaks in both China and the U.S. and worries – Again, this is a theme we've heard about a few times tonight, and worries that another leak could cause a pandemic to break out. So almost a decade ago, people were worried about this. And in 2017, unfortunately, the NIH, uh, specifically the NIH director, Francis Collins and Anthony Fauci, uh, spearheaded a successful effort to lift this ban on gain-of-function research and enthousi enthusiastically sought to fund even more of these treacherous experiments like the ones in Wuhan, and they did. Um, but since earlier this year, uh, we've been pressing the, the Biden administration to reinstate the 2014 moratorium on gain-of-function research in order to prevent more dangerous animal experiments and protect public health. Uh, Joe Biden has done the right thing once, and we're urging him to do the right thing again. Um, well, thank you very Matthew, much, did Justin. You to, did, yeah, did you want to do that survey? Yeah, I would. You read my mind. We also <laughs> uh, <laughs> want to hear your priorities um, in the war on waste, everyone at home. So if you guys wouldn't mind, um, we have a quick survey for you that you can respond to using your telephone keypad right now. Um, I'll r repeat the question and the answers twice. Um, so don't worry if you miss it the first time. Um, the question is, what is the most important thing we should prioritize to end wasteful, cruel, and dangerous animal experiments? Press 1 if you think the most thing important thing is for us to expose more taxpayer waste, like the $1.1 million spent to hook fish on nicotine and ecstasy in the U.K. Press 2 if you'd like us to prioritize passing Senator Ernst Stop Act to punish rogue rep labs like EcoHealth by cutting off their funding when they refuse to obey federal laws. Press three if you'd like us to prioritize securing a real investigation into the COVID-19 pandemic origins and NIH funding for gain-of-function experiments at the Wuhan Animal Lab. One more time. Uh, the survey question is, what is the most important thing we should prioritize to end wasteful, cruel, and dangerous animal experiments? Press 1 to prioritize exposing more taxpayer waste, like the $1.1 million wasted to hook fish on nicotine and ecstasy in the U.K. Press 2 to prioritize passing the 
Stop Act to punish rogue labs like the EcoHealth by cutting off their funding when they refuse to obey federal laws. Press 3 for securing a real investigation into the COVID-19 pandemic origins and the NIH funding for gain-of-function experiments at the Wuhan Animal Lab. I have another question here. Um, uh, it's from Kelly from St. Louis, and I'm just going to read her question aloud. Um, she says, you mentioned earlier that the Senate just passed legislation to cut funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But I also know President Trump cut the grant last year when you first exposed it. Now I hear the lab is still authorized for NIH payouts. So I'm a bit confused on the various different defunding floating around. Does this mean the lab can't get any more taxpayer money? Basically, where does this all stand? Kelly, I totally understand how confusing that could be. So, Justin, I will throw that question to you. Sure, yeah, and I think it's probably confusing for all of us at one point or another. So it's a great question, and I think other people on the phone probably have the same uh, concern. So back in April 2020, like I mentioned at the top of the call, we were able to get the – there was one active grant that was funding the Wuhan Institute of Virology from the National Institutes of Health. And we were able to get that grant canceled uh, by then-President Trump, which was great, except, as Senator Ernst mentioned, the Wuhan Institute of Virology to this day has remained eligible to receive more taxpayer funding, and the NIH has refused – to say that they will not send more money there. So Congress has had to step in and take additional action. Uh, in May of 2021, uh, our friend Scott Perry from, Congressman Scott Perry from Pennsylvania introduced a bill called the Defund the Wuhan Institute of Virology Act, which is a standalone piece of legislation that would cut funding permanently for the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That was on the House side. In late May, as Senator Ernst mentioned, she led a successful effort to pass through the Senate, so the House bill was just introduced. It hasn't moved yet. But in the Senate, legislation has been passed, led by Senator Ernst, to permanently prohibit the Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, from receiving taxpayer funding. And we're hoping to see that bill reach the President's desk uh, in, in the coming months. Um, but also earlier this month in the House, um, there's – there were three different agencies that were funding the Wuhan Institute of Virology in these dangerous gain-of-function animal experiments, the Department of State, the Pentagon, and the National Institutes of Health. So what the members of the House of Representatives have done working with White Coat Waste Project is introduce language into the funding bills for each of those agencies saying that if they want to get their money for 2022, that they have to commit to not sending any of it to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And those that language has passed successfully through those different subcommittees and will be voted on the House in the House this week. So basically, we now have language that has passed the full Senate and that is about to pass the House that will, both in the short term and long term, permanently cut, uh, cut funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So things are moving in the right direction where there's no active money going there. And thanks to Senator Ernst, there's movement afoot uh, on Capitol Hill and in the White and you know soon to be in the White House, hopefully to get that money cut forever. Thanks, Justin Kelly. I hope that helps helps clarify things a little bit. Um, we have another question um, from Anita Lanier. She's from Long Island City, and Anita would like to know if there's a list of laboratories that we can look out for so we don't donate money to support them? Well, unfortunately, you know, our big concern here at White Coat Waste Project is taxpayer-funded animal experiments because two-thirds of all uh, animal experimentation in the U.S. is funded by taxpayers. And uh, for better or for worse, unless you want to go to jail, you got to pay your taxes. Um, so the best thing that you can do to make sure your money isn't spent on animal experimentation is to contact your members of Congress and we have one right here on the phone tonight who's heard from many Iowans and who's taken action, the exact, exact action we want to see taken. A majority of the public doesn't want to fund the, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and Senator Ernst has been extraordinary in leading the charge to do that. Um, so members of Congress should – their job is to be responsive to their constituents' concerns. 
So if you don't want your money being spent at the Wuhan Institute of Virology on dangerous animal experiments that could are not only cruel but could have caused the pandemic, uh, you can do a number of things, but one of them is visiting WuhanAnimalLab.org, where you can write your members of Congress directly to let them know. And we follow up with every single office that that uh, in Congress and make sure that your voices are being heard and they're doing what you want. Thanks, Justin. And I just have one more question. This is from Mary Bonham from Colorado, and she is asking, what is Joe Biden doing about the NIH, and what are other members of Congress um, besides Senator Ernst doing? Well, luckily, we work with a very broad, diverse, bipartisan coalition of members of Congress who are working to cut wasteful spending on animal experiments. Um, in addition to the work we're doing with Senator Ernst, obviously we've been working to end uh, wasteful experiments on dogs and cats at the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, we've been successful in getting the EPA to commit to ending wasteful animal testing that does not protect public health, does not protect the environment, and hurts animals. Um, so Congress is doing more than ever, I would say, in terms of uh, taking action to prevent taxpayer-funded animal experimentation. Uh, in terms of the White House, we will see. We will see if the work Senator Ernst uh, is doing gets, the, gets signed into law. Uh, we're, we're all optimistic that it will because these are important efforts that have wide bipartisan support. A majority of the public does not want their tax dollars spent on animal experimentation, period. And the White House has heard from us. We've been working, you know, we've been working to make sure they're aware of the issue of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Uh, work the issue of lab animal retirement that we've been working on uh, and everything else. Um, so we we do work with hundreds, literally hundreds of members of Congress who are signed on to our various efforts and are, you know, putting their name on the line and using their influence to save animals and save tax dollars. Thank you, Justin, and thanks for all the thoughtful questions and comments. Uh, Justin, I'll, I'll throw it to you and Senator Ernst to wrap it up. All right. Uh, the progress we're making to expose and stop taxpayer-funded animal experimentation is remarkable. It really is. I've been doing this uh, full-time for about 15 years, and I've never seen more momentum, uh, more support on Capitol Hill, and really more outstanding leadership than I have, and in particular from Senator Joni Arts, who we've been so uh, lucky and fortunate to have here today on the call with us. Did you want to say anything else, Senator Ernst? Oh, absolutely, Justin. And uh, just for everyone that's still with us on the call, want to thank you for taking the time uh, invested this evening to hear about some of the efforts that we have going on in Congress and, of course, um, the great work that Justin Mackey and the White Coat Waste Project are doing. I can't tell you the engagement uh, that they have had with my office. It's fantastic, and we are doing our best to safeguard your tax dollars and stop them from going to the types of projects that uh, Justin had outlined earlier. It is outrageous. Um, so, again, thanks so much, um, definitely, for the White Coat Waste Project for organizing this discussion this evening. It is very, very timely. And once again, to everyone that was on this call Thank you for your commitment to protecting animals and holding the government accountable. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Senator Ernst. You bet. Thanks, everyone. So, yeah, once again, a big thank you to Senator Ernst, who's leading the war on waste, both at home and abroad, and I also just want to take a moment to thank everyone again who's on this call. I know Senator Ernst did, but the work we're doing with her and other members of Congress and the remarkable progress we we're making could not, literally would not be possible without your involvement and your generous support of White Coat Waste Project. Yes, um, and before you go, we really could use your voice tonight. Right now, we're asking supporters to sign on to an urgent national petition to permanently defund the Wuhan Animal Lab. 
If you have a moment, can you please go to www.wuhananimallab.org? One more time, that's www.wuhananimallab.org. Or you can simply press one on your phone right now and we'll include your name on our petition. Again, press one on your phone right now to sign the petition, making sure that the NIH never again shifts your money to the Wuhan lab for wasteful, dangerous, and cruel animal experiments that can cause pandemics. Sadly, we couldn't get to every question tonight, um, but if you do have additional questions, please stay on the, on the line and you can leave a voicemail. Or even if you don't have a question, we would love to hear from you. If you stay on the line and leave a voicemail about the importance of stopping taxpayer-funded animal experiments and how uh, we can end wasteful government animal spending on animal tests. Um, we would love to share your message with more members of Congress and the media, put it on our website or social media. We just really wanna hear um, your name, where you're from, and why ending taxpayer-funded animal experiments is so important to you. Again, we could not do this work without your support. Our team is standing by to take your calls. Um, and please don't forget to follow us on social media and sign the petition at www.wuhananimallab.org. Thanks everyone so much for your time and have a great night. Stay healthy and safe.